Welcome back to Topic 10 Solutions. Today's topic is 10.2, Solubility of Solutions, and our aim is to describe the factors that affect solubility. So solubility factors, does everything dissolve in each other? So we know from experience that this is not true. Some things dissolve really easily in water or some other solvent, and other things do not dissolve easily in water at all. So an example would be coffee. Sugar dissolves easily in coffee. However, when you put the spoon in the coffee, the spoon does not dissolve. So certain things tend to dissolve and certain things do not. Solubility is the amount of a solute that will dissolve in a certain amount of solvent at a certain temperature. So solubility tells us about the amount of a solute that will dissolve. And temperature affects solubility. So we can see how soluble something is at different temperatures. Materials that are highly soluble means that they have high amounts of solute dissolved in the solvent. Okay, if they are insoluble, they have low solubility, and these do not dissolve in the solvent or very, very small amounts dissolve. So what affects solubility? The nature of the solute and the solvent. And one way to remember this is that like dissolves like. So what does that mean? Polar solutes dissolve in polar solvents. So if you have a polar substance such as water, something that is a, a polar solvent will dissolve a polar solute. Nonpolar solutes dissolve in nonpolar solvents. So here's a picture that shows our uh, polar solvent and what is going to dissolve in it is something that is also polar. So like dissolves like. Sodium chloride, also known as table salt, dissolves in water. So we know water is polar because a water molecule is polar. So what does this tell us about sodium chloride? It also must be polar since it dissolves. And so since both are polar, they readily are able to dissolve within each other. Positive and negative charged ions of your sodium chloride break apart into the, the solvent, the water, and attract opposite poles of water molecules. So it has to do with the way that they line up with their polar sides, matching up to a, the um, nonpolar side of the other part of the particle. Okay, so polar particles have a plus side and a minus side, and they attract each other within the solution. So sodium is a positive ion. It's attracted to the negative oxygen in the water. Chlorine has a negative ion, and it's attracted to the positive hydrogen in the water. It kind of works like magnets, right? Your positive ends will be attracted to negative ends and vice versa. The attractive forces between the water and sodium ions is stronger than the attractive forces between the sodium um, ion and the chlorine ion. Okay, so they are able to pull onto each other and dissolve within the solution. Ions stay dissolved in the water and the salt does not remain as a solid. So what else affects solubility? Nonpolar solutes will not dissolve in polar solvents. So a fat is nonpolar. So for example, oil is a fat it does not dissolve in water. You will see that it leaves a layer you know, within. It doesn't dissolve. So water is polar. A fat is nonpolar. Therefore, it doesn't dissolve. The attractive forces between the fat and the water are not strong enough to keep them dissolved. Okay, So you end up with oil droplets within the water, and it does not dissolve in. You end up with a heterogeneous mixture, not homogeneous. The solution is always homogeneous, you will not see the parts within the solution. So fats will, though, dissolve in nonpolar solvents. So there are nonpolar solvents that can dissolve your fats. The forces that hold together nonpolar molecules are weak, so they break apart easily and dissolve easily in your nonpolar solvent. Grease is nonpolar, which is a fat as well, and soap is also nonpolar. So we are able to use soap to dissolve grease when we wash our hands. 
right? If you just have grease on your hands and try and get it off with water, water alone does not dissolve the grease off your hands. Soap does. So you add soap and all of a sudden you can get that off. It dissolves it right off. Grease dissolves in the soap and washes off your hands as, as the soap also washes off. So nonpolar soap and nonpolar grease, as they're both nonpolar, they are able to dissolve and form a solution that will take care of any grease or fats. So to summarize solubility, if you have a nonpolar solute, remember the solute is what you are putting into the solvent. If it's nonpolar and you need a nonpolar solvent for it to be soluble, a polar solvent will make it insoluble. So like dissolves like. Polar is insoluble in a nonpolar solvent, but soluble in a polar solvent. An ionic, okay, an ionic compound is polar by nature. Okay? It's uh, got a big difference between its electronegativity. Therefore, they are polar. It's a metal nonmetal combination. So it will be insoluble in a nonpolar solvent, but soluble in a polar solvent. Ionic compounds are also polar. Temperature also affects solubility. So as temperature increases, most solids become more soluble in water. So if you increase temperature, it will help to dissolve more of your solute. Some exceptions are warm water dissolves more iced tea. Temperature increases, the solubility of gases in liquids decreases. So if you increase temperature, less gas will dissolve into your solvent. Soda has less carbonation or bubbles when it's warmer. Right? If you have soda um, and it's outside in, in a warmer temperature, there'll be less bubbles. The gas, the, the carbonation, the carbon dioxide that's put into the soda liquid will not be able to stay in as well as when it's very cold. So colder soda has more bubbles inside of it because it increases its solubility. Pressure. So how does pressure affect solubility? Pressure doesn't have a very big effect on solubility for solids and liquids. It does, though, have an effect for gases, and this is kind of how soda is made. It requires some pressure to get the gas into that liquid. So as pressure increases, the solubility of gases in the liquid increases. So when enough pressure is applied, they're able to push gas into the liquid to create soda. So when you open a can of soda, the pressure decreases, right? You let out the carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is escaping as bubbles, and then it's less soluble. Okay, so this is two pictures you might want to draw showing gas at low pressure over a liquid. And here's your dissolved gas and the gas molecules trying to come in. And at high pressure, you're able to put more of those molecules into the solvent. Here's another example with a soda can. The carbon dioxide is under pressure, holding it into the liquid. So it's dissolved in solution. As soon as you pop that top, you release the pressure in the can, the gas escapes and the bubbles come out of solution. So the gas re removes itself from the solution and this is when your soda goes flat if it's left out too long. So some practice questions. Nonpolar solvents will most easily dissolve solids that are, so it's nonpolar, remember like dissolves like. So nonpolar solvents will not dissolve an ionic Ionic is polar. Covalent can be nonpolar, so that would be your answer. Under what conditions are gases most soluble in water? Gases are most soluble, low temperature, high pressure. As the temperature of a liquid decreases, the amount of gas that can be dissolved, so if the temperature is decreasing, the amount of gas that can be dissolved increases. And what is the relationship between solubility of sulfur dioxide gas and temperature? The relationship between solubility of any gas and temperature is if your temperature is increasing, the solubility mm -hmm. is decreasing. Gases are more soluble at a lower temperature. So this is an indirect relationship. As uh, temperature increases, solubility decreases. Describe the effect on the solubility of potassium nitrate solid in water if the pressure is increased. This is a little bit of a trick question. We're talking about pressure increasing, but we're using a solid 
to put in water. And the trick here is that pressure only affects solubility of a gas, not on a liquid or a solid. And that is the end of this part of our notes. See you next time.